the Lord is steadfast and faithful, the, that one will discover the faithfulness of God, his covenant faithfulness, his guiding and his leading, because he is a sinner who has recognized his sin and he has humbled himself. And that's why we ask, mercifully grant your spirit to direct all things and rule our hearts. Hi, it's Father Jeremiah of Grace Anglican Church here in Gastonia, North Carolina. And today we have a new collect reflection. This one is for the collect that is for use from the week of the Sunday from September 11th to September 17th. It's proper number 19 and it's found on page 620 of the 2019 Book of Common Prayer, which is what we use here at Grace Anglican Church. And as we look at that, I do ask you to do those three things that I always ask you to do. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and bell icon, and share this on whatever social media platforms you are a part of. All of those things help us as a channel to grow and help the algorithms know that people like this and are interested in this kind of content and people who share your interest will discover us more easily through your help for us. So the collect for this week is proper 19 in it goes like this, so let's pray together. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So this particular proper reminds us of a harsh truth. It's kind of a gut punch to us, especially in that first line. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you. That's a hard truth that Christianity clings to and recognizes that we, on our own, cannot ever please God. We require God's work in us to change us, to transform us, to make us into the kind of people who please God, who are united to Christ. And in our union with Christ, our actions are then purified by Christ in order that we can then come before the Father. But it's only in Christ. It's not because of our good deeds. It's not because of our good works or our good actions that enable us to do this. It's the work of Christ in us through his Holy Spirit. And so because without you, that is without God himself acting in us and upon us, we are not able to please you. That can be summed up very easily in the book of Romans. In the book of Romans, in chapter 8, verse 8, Paul, St. Paul writes, Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who, ri who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. And right there, Paul sums up, what this entry into this collect is telling us, that if we are in the flesh, we cannot please God. That is, we cannot offer right sacrifices. We cannot live in accordance with God's law. We cannot accrue spiritual benefits from God in our lives. That all of our actions, ultimately, because they are fleshly actions, even good deeds are tainted with sin, on our own, they only heap up the debt we owe before God. Because if we're working in the flesh to try to please God, then we're trying to please God by our own efforts. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. We, no matter how much we try to obey the law, no matter how much we try to strive according to God's commandments, if we're doing it out of our own fleshly works, if we're doing it out of our own abilities, without God being part of our lives, without faith in Christ, then those actions are not pleasing to God in the ultimate sense. They are not done spiritually. They are not done by faith. And St. Paul will later say in Romans 14 that whatever is not done from faith is sin. And so even our good deeds, if done without faith, without belief, without trust in God, they become sinful. They become tainted by our sins. Everything we do is tainted by sin. And hence the fact we say that without you, we are not able to please you. Which also makes me think of John 15, where Christ says, I am the vine and you are the branches. You must abide in me. If you don't abide in me, then you will be cut off. You will be trimmed away from the vine. And so, it's a harsh teaching. It's a gut punch to us. It kind of kicks us down. Because without you, we are not able to please you. Now, ultimately, our desire as Christians, as believers, is to please God. Because we have been changed. We have been transformed. We have been renewed after the image of Christ through faith, through baptism, through the work of the sacraments in us, through the work of the Word in us. The Spirit comes and works in us. And so, without the Spirit working in us, we are unable to please God. Now, what does that mean in the big picture? Does that mean that anyone who's not a Christian cannot ever possibly do any type of good work? That everything they do is pure evil? Well, no. We all recognize that 
because man was created in the image of God, though man has fallen from that original image and from that original righteousness that was found in faith in God for Adam and Eve, though man has fallen from that, we still reflect a glimmer of that image. It's bent, it's marred. And scripture speaks of the law of God still being written upon our hearts that we recognize that there is a moral law over us, which will ultimately guide us in some ways, in various ways, that most of the time, though, it is convicting us. It is coming against us saying, you have not done what is right. You have not done that which is pleasing to the creator. But when man does strive and hear the law and try to follow it, some he can accomplish good works before other men. He can do that which is good. The unbeliever can give huge sums of money to various kinds of charity. The unbeliever can help the poor. The unbeliever can do all kinds of good before man. But that is not good before God because he does it without faith in God. A man can fulfill his calling and his vocations in that sense from an earthly perspective, be doing good because he's doing that which God has called him to do. And God will even work through the sinful man's actions. Through the unbeliever, God can still work to accomplish the greater good, to accomplish helping others. But in the ultimate sense, without God's spirit in us, what we do is not pleasing to God in the spiritual sense, in the way that he wants it to be pleasing to him. And so because without him, we cannot ultimately please him, we ask this wonderful, beautiful request. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Fill us with your spirit, O God. Give us your spirit to direct our paths, to rule our hearts. And our hearts is that place of desire. If the spirit is ruling over our hearts, then he is guiding our loves. He is guiding our desires. And as our desires are guided nearer to God the Father through Jesus Christ, then our actions will begin to conform to that which God desires of us. That as we desire God, he pours his desires into us. And he will reshape us and change us and make us into the kind of people he wants us to be. He will direct our hearts. He will direct our lives. He will make us know him more deeply. Which leads me to a psalm that I came across that I was looking at earlier as I was studying this collect. There's a psalm, Psalm 25. And in verses 8 and 9, it tells us something that is in line with this idea of gr the Spirit being granted to direct and rule our hearts. In Psalm 25, verse 8, the psalmist says, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Do you see the flow of those few verses there in this psalm that First, good and upright is the Lord. The Lord, God himself, is the true upright one. He is the truly good and righteous one. And so because he is good, he will instruct sinners in the way. He will guide people who recognize their sinfulness. He will guide those who know that they are sinners and have turned to him in confession and repentance. And so verse 9 tells us that he leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. You see, instructing sinners in the way and teaching the humble go together because the one who has recognized he is a sinner has humbled himself before the Lord. The word, the law, the promises of God have confronted the sinner, caused him to recognize his sin. And so through the power of the word and the sacraments working in us, that sinner recognizes his sinfulness and he humbles himself by the power of God and the spirit working in him, which comes to him through the word and sacraments. He humbles himself so that he can then be led in what is right. And then the Lord can teach the humble his way. And so in light of that humble one who recognizes his sinfulness, following God and being taught by the Spirit himself through the word, the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies, for those who enter in to following God, who pursue him, who look to his ways, the Lord is steadfast and faithful. The, that one will discover the faithfulness of God, his covenant faithfulness, his guiding and his leading, because he is a sinner who has recognized his sin and he has humbled himself. And that's why we ask, mercifully grant your spirit to direct all things and rule our hearts. We want the Holy Spirit to work in us and to direct us and to guide us in everything. And that's this prayer drives us to that. It reminds us deeply of that. And we must drink from the well of this truth that without God, without his spirit, we cannot please him. We will live lives that are unpleasing, lives that are not worthy to stand before him when we are in ourselves. But through baptism and faith, through the word and the sacraments, God comes to us and his spirit dwells in us and the spirit will renew our hearts for he will sprinkle our hearts clean and he will replace our old hearts and give us new hearts that will desire and love God. When we receive the spirit, 
when we receive the work of God, when we receive the promises of God, when we receive the, that which Christ has done on our behalf through his death and his resurrection, we become ones who are united to Christ and thus can please God and thus can walk in his way in a way that is pleasing to him. And so we then start to pray more and more and more mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Our hearts must be directed and ruled by God himself because without that ruling and that directing, our hearts will flicker away. It will go back toward that path of sinfulness, back toward that path of unrighteousness, back toward that path of being alone and in itself, seeking its own pleasure, seeking its own good, seeking its own gain. Because our hearts are deceitful. Our hearts left on their own will turn from God. But as we pray for the Spirit to work in us and to direct our paths, we will be drawn more and more to God the Father through Jesus Christ. The Spirit will work in us more and more and He will direct our hearts by leading us on the paths of righteousness, he will rule over our hearts and create more and more love of God that can receive the fullness of the love of God. And so we cry out, direct and rule our hearts by your spirit. Grant your spirit to do this, O God, because without him working in us, without you, the one true God working in us, we cannot please you. And we were made to please you. We were made to know you. We were made to walk in your ways and to be your people. So work in us, O God, that we might know you more and we might do the work which you have given us to do. And so may you be blessed as you reflect on this collect. May you be blessed as you pray this collect. And may this collect come to fruition in your own life as you pray this collect daily in your life, especially this week and hopefully maybe even including it in the weeks to come to consider and to roll it over in your mind more and more. So may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.